Well, good morning to each and every one of you. I'm so glad to see you, and I do pray that you have come in to worship the Lord. I don't know about you, but that's what I've done. Brother Perry have come in to praise God and thank Him for His goodness and His grace. And we have an opportunity, each and every one of us, to draw closer unto Him. Sister Diana, the Word of God says that today is the day of salvation. And I thank Him for that. Because there's a lot of people out there trying to steal life. There's a lot of people out there trying to take away from the glory and the dignity of mankind. But one thing that I have found, isn't that right, brother? Praise be to God in this living word. There is life, brother Bubba. And that life is given to us by Jesus Christ. Oh, without the Lord, we would be lost, church. But I thank God that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And in the meantime, let's stand up. And I want to go to the Lord in prayer and ask him just to have his way in this service. Dear Father, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you once again for your grace, once again for your mercy. And I'm asking you here this morning, Father, as we gather together in your name, in Jesus' name, that you would help us once again, Father, to be sensitive to your spirit. My Lord, that you would allow us, dear Father, just to be connected to what you would have us to do. And Lord, that we would be able to get our personal agendas out of the way. Lord, that we would be able to get all fear out of the way, all discouragement, and allow hope and faith to rise up here this morning. My Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you for all In Jesus' name we do pray, and the church says amen and amen. If you're happy to be in the house of God, let's give the Lord a hand by the praise right now. Oh, thank you. Let's go ahead and open up in worship. Go ahead right now. Oh, praise the Lord.
this season, Sister Diana, but I'm telling you right now, in this word is the very roadmap to heaven. The word of God says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And this Bible is basic instructions before leaving earth. And yes, amen. So I want to go ahead as a representative of Moorhaven Church of God and as your pastor, I want to give you this word here. And I know you're a very articulate young lady. So also we're giving you a little study book that you can put down some words in. But I want you to take this. Oh, praise the Lord. I want you to take this and use this. And if you have any questions, any questions at all, first and foremost, you call on him and say, God, open up this word for you. And as you look around, you have brothers and sisters that know this word and they'll sure enough help you. That's God, and I'm always here for you as well. So God bless you, sister. May the Lord give you strength all the way. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, you, yeah, you know, I'm not going to bear you too much. Amen. Praise God. And eventually, she got a soul on her heart, too. And as time comes along, we're going to get her around here, and she's going to sing for us. But I just want God to have, her, have his way here this morning. Can you say amen? You know what? Does anybody want to serve God this morning? I hope you do. I hope you do, because that's what I've come to do, is serve him. Praise the Lord and glory. Amen. So let's go ahead and hey, announcements, choir practice tonight at 4 p.m. Okay, why 4 p.m.? Because we have prayer meeting at 5 p.m. Amen. So once again, we've been working on some new worship songs and some songs coming to the heart. So we want to go ahead and work on that. So 4 p.m., Pastor, hopefully by the will of God, won't keep you too long so you can go home, eat some crock pot meal, and go ahead and get a good Pentecostal nap and be back over here at 4 p.m. Okay? All right? Praise the Lord. Amen. And once again, 5 p.m., uh, the youth conference that was over there in Lake Placid has been postponed until further notice, so please continue to be praying for our kids. But I will give you... Okay, so as that meeting or has been uh, postponed until further notice, I'll give you the dates. But also, Sister Bridget has a quick ladies' meeting after service. So if you ladies would please stick around, and um, and she's going to have a few words here with you, so please do that. And it'll be right over here in this area. So let's go ahead and see what the Lord's leading her to do. Praise God. Once again, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now. Who wants to come keep on worshiping a few songs? Right? Sing a few songs. Let's do that. Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and grab a couple of them hymns. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In your church circles, page 239, victory today is mine. There's a deep set of peace.
Yes, one gave so much more money than the other, but they gave out of a heart of love and of worship. <laughs> so, Brother Billy, can you come and help us out real quick? Justice, come on, buddy. Let's go ahead and give a heart of worship, give it out of a heart of love. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you for this time that you've given us this opportunity to worship you. We praise you and thank you, Lord, for all that you've done in our lives. Jesus Christ, we praise you for your blessings that you've given us. And we pray that this would just help your church, your people to continue to spread the word of God. Help us to be blessed. Help us to understand your word, Lord, in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Sometimes it's okay to have a difference of opinion in one sense, but it never, ever must we have a difference of opinion of what thus saith the Lord. And I've seen God grab a hold of her and just help her and nurse her and to grow in that sense. But she hit the nail on the head, you know, even as a church, you know, we have a responsibility. And that is what the church is to do, to put out that love that people desire and they need. You know, not so much to rely on the government to come and do that, but in all reality, it is the church's responsibility to disperse, to show, and to help. And you'll find out that if the church was to truly be what God has called it to be, you will see that come out. You will see that love come out. Isn't 
find that we were being cornered. We should have been all been hopeful. We should have asked people to be hope and what we have to do. And right. now we don't. We don't just individually buy up all the toilet paper that we have in this time. Right. So it's just, but we need to start. We needed to start at home. And now we're trying to catch up. And oh, yeah. Well, I think we need to start right here is where we need to start. Amen. Thank you, Nancy. Praise the Lord. Brother Gene, please worship God. You all worship with my brother Gene. Love to him right here. Praise God. Boy, now this looks like church. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank God, eh? Praise the Lord. I tell you, boy, to get back to normal, huh? We praise the Lord for that. I thank God for it. I thank God to see my son here and my daughter-in-law. I'm so happy to see them. They said it's going to be their church. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Praise the Lord. It's a happy day today. And I just want to thank God for everything that everybody's doing. Praying, I, I tell you, they prayed for us. They prayed for my son and my daughter in law so much. And I thank God for that. And I just thank God that I'm here today. Thank God that I'm sanctified through the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank God, hallelujah, because, Lord, I know my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I'll tell you right now, baby, amen, that's worth everything. You know, people seeking for treasure and fame and fortune and everything, but I found mine. How about you, glory to God? I found mine. I found it when Jesus saved my soul. Hallelujah. And wrote my name down in heaven. Hallelujah. God for it more. And I'm so happy to pay for that. Praise God. Y'all pray for me tonight, this morning, as I try to sing this song. Amen. I don't know if I've ever sang in church, but you know how it goes. <laughs> Sometimes I'm busy, but I'm going to try it. You may ask me how.
Can you say amen? Woo! Praise the Lord of glory. I don't know about you. I know Brother Perry, he can put some 
He put a hurting on them ribs and I've never tasted a better steak cooked by Brother David. But I'm telling you, you let some of those angelic beings go ahead and put that spread across that table. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it's going to be a time. But it's going to be a time with the king. It's going to be a time with the loved ones that have already went home. The word of God says that we shall forever be with him. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to that time. But we got to get there first, church. It's not over with yet. Can you say amen? We still have work to do. We still have a faith to contend. But we still have a responsibility to hold on. Praise be to God. And finish our course that he's put out before us. Everybody take a deep breath right now. Take a deep breath. You know what that means? That's life. You know what also that means? God's not done with you yet. Woo! Praise be to God. Amen. He's not done yet. We still have work to do. And if you would please turn with me in your Bibles to Jude. Children's Church is reverently going to head on out of him. And I want you to, and the youth, Jude is the last letter to the church before Revelation. So if you go all the way to the back of your book and go to Revelation and take a hard left, you'll see Jude. Amen. Thank you, Brother David. So a good brother of mine, I said, hey, was the last time you read Jude chapter 3? All right, praise the Lord. You're going to find out Jude don't have a chapter 3. <laughs> All of you are like, yeah, yeah, I remember Jude 3. No, no you don't. <laughs> How'd you be like? Praise the Lord. Amen. Jude, chapter 1. It's interesting because I don't even have a chapter 1. This says Jude, verse 1. You're there? Stand with me for one moment. And I'm just going to read seven verses to you. And I'm only going to be able to preach the first two. I'm going to read seven to you because we're going to take a journey, Sister Diana, these next few weeks, maybe months, to the letter of Jude to the church. And I remember last time the Lord had us camp out in a certain area for a little while. There are some chains broken. There are some lives changed. There was a woman saved from death, literally, Sister Ann's daughter. The doctor told her to pull the plug. She got ran over by a vehicle twice at one time. The doctor told her to pull the plug. There's no hope. Sister Ann looked at that doctor and said, My pastor's been preaching about them dead bones coming alive. And those dead bones came to life. And I'm telling you, Sister Ann told that doctor, You ain't pulling the plug. And don't you know her daughter's alive today? Can you say amen? Why? Because God spoke to her heart. Just like I believe these next few weeks, if not months, God's going to speak to our hearts. Jude chapter, Jude verse 1. The word of God says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in faith and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Verse 2 says, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Notice it says multiplied. Not added to, but multiplied. Verse 3, beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you. That you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness 
and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I would therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Oh boy. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Oh, church, I want to preach to you this fault and please pray for your pastor because I need it right now. Not many men of God, women of God come out of this letter because of the sharpness but also the hardness of the word but one thing I've learned that God has done through this ministry is always delivered the word seasoned with grace and love. It made it to where you find out that there is a God that loves you beyond time. There's a God that loves you beyond life. There's a God that has given us life. I want to preach to you this thought, the next chapter the next chapter. And I believe as God gives us strength to go through this journey, all those who by faith would seek his face will draw closer to him and be ready for what's ahead. Sister Shirley, this responsibility has been given to us and to me. I pray we heed this call and be wise as God has given us strength to do so. Pray with me, dear Father, we love you. We praise you and we thank you once again. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the anointing I feel here right now. I'm asking you, my Lord, to open up the very ears of the hearers. Those, dear Father, that are earnestly seeking your face. Those, God, that are feeling discouragement. Those that are fearful. Those right now that just want the answer. Will you please, God? Open up the very hearts and help us once again this morning. Lord, you have never left us. Oh, praise God, you've never left us. And I'm asking you, my Lord, this morning to give us strength. We love you and we praise you. The church says amen and amen. Look at your neighbor and ask him this question. Are you ready for the next chapter? Praise the Lord. You may be seated. If you want to. I got to stand with 258 pounds on these tootsies over here. No. <laughs> God has given us such a wonderful hope in Jesus Christ. And that hope is given to us this morning because... Whatever you find out in life, you're going to find that Jesus is the answer. Hello? Amen. Jesus is the answer. And if you ever had a question come up to you and, and you don't know the answer, I just want to go ahead and give you a little hint. The answer is Jesus. You say, wait, that don't make sense in half the things that I have to do in life. Well, I'm telling you right now that you're looking at it through man's eyes if you are. Because when you look at it through the eyes of Christ, you will see that it all makes sense. Hello? You'll see that it all makes sense. This journey we're about to take, that we're about to go on, is what I believe the next step to draw his church, everybody say his church, closer to the king and closer to the Lord. We all have a decision to make a choice, and this choice is brought to us this morning by the Holy Ghost. And this is the choice we must make. I'm going to ask you a question. 
You don't have to answer out loud. I want to ask you a question. Do you want to go to heaven after you die? Praise the Lord. Or will you choose the alternative? The alternative is the lake of fire, which is the second death. The choice you make will determine your eternal destination. But now, Pastor, has good news. Can you say amen? This good news is Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died on that old rugged tree, as known as the cross, for your sins and my sins. And through his blood, everybody say his blood. Praise the Lord. There is forgiveness offered to all who would accept this great sacrifice. You say, Pastor, you come out swinging hard, didn't you? I did, didn't I? Won't expect nothing less. Because I've learned nine times out of ten that if you're going to win the fight, you've got to come in hard. Can you say amen? Right. And normally you got to get the first punch. Because right. <laughs> I like hitting that devil in the jaw and shaking him up a little bit. Praise God. I love it because I know that God has ordained us to do exactly that. You know that forgiveness is a powerful weapon against the doubt and pain caused by sin and rebellion against God the Father. Let me say that again. Forgiveness is a powerful weapon against the doubt and pain caused by sin and the rebellion against God the Father. In Colossians chapter 1, verse number 12, the Bible says, Given thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. Praise God. I don't know if you heard that right there, but there was a deliverance from the power of darkness and hath translated us, which literally means transformed us, but basically taken us from one point of time and placed us in another into the kingdom of his dear son. And who we have redemption, how do we have this redemption? Through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Oh, praise the Lord for that. If you choose life, you will choose Jesus. If you choose this world and the lust thereof, then death is your choice. And there is no second chances after the last breath is gone. Did you hear me? I said there's no second chances. This is it. This is your opportunity to draw close unto God. The word of God says in 1 John chapter 2, verse number 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Just Alexa, forever is a long time. Can you say amen? Amen. How do you get you get into that forever? By fulfilling and doing the will of God. What is the will of God? I'm going to tell you, you put all your faith and hope in Jesus Christ the righteous. The will of God is for us to have our heart connected to who he is. You know, I have a responsibility in these last days to tell you the truth. Who wants to hear the truth? Sister Diana, I have a responsibility. 2020 never thought we'd be facing what we have right here. But it is preparation for what's ahead. Praise God. I have that responsibility in these last days to tell you the truth. And this truth will make you free. It will make you free. I don't know about you, but I've been having the news people trying to come up and hijack this thought process. I've had other people coming in trying to hijack what I have going on up here. But I'm telling you right now, the truth of the matter will make you free. Praise the Lord. If you will trust in this truth, if you walk by faith, and walk on the straight and narrow road that is called the way. The way. There's only one way. Can you say amen? His way, not your way. Amen. <laughs> I'm glad this is wooden right here. <laughs> you can't see me. But don't you know that God's way is the only way? And it's not your way. It's not Burger King. <laughs> can have it your way and God's way at the same time. No, no, no. You see, with that reality of it, his way is not your way. His way is the only way that leads straight to heaven. Hello? His way is the only way 
that leads straight to heaven. And if you come up and say, Pastor, I heard there's many ways, I'll sit down with you for an hour after church. There is only one way. So if there is only one way, what does that mean for everybody else? I'm going to tell you what that means. They are deceived. They are believing a lie. And that lie has went ahead and comforted their conscience right. where they think their relationship with God is right. When all reality, it is dead wrong. No. I know people believe in reincarnation. I'm telling you right now, if God is a God of love, that means he's going to reincarnate you into a love bug. And if God reincarnates you into a love bud, you know what's going to happen, don't you? And the reason why I'm bringing that out is because people are looking forward to that reincarnation. And I'm telling you right now that there is no second chances. Amen. You don't get to come back as something or somebody else. This is it. This is the next chapter. I want us to grab this reality because the word says in Matthew 7, verse number 13, enter ye into the straight gate. You know what that means? Come on in. <laughs> Praise God. That means come on in. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go thereat. Notice it said many. Many are them that are walking on that very wide gate and broad way. And this is the reason because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few, everybody say few, there be that find it. And then he goes on to say, and this is really what is he going to say, how are you bringing in Jude to this whole thing? I want to share with you. In verse 15 in Matthew chapter 7, the word of God says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are ravening wolves. He says, beware. Sister Judy, as I truly believe we're living in the last times, the last days, the last moments, as you see prophecy unfold as it is, you also know that the enemy is on high demand. And he is, in fact, working overtime to grab a hold what God has instilled in your heart and your mind. He says, beware. You know what that means? Look out. Yeah. For what? You look out for false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Now on a high note, everybody say on a high note. The broad way, praise God, there is plenty of room to turn around and take the exit, Mark John 3.16. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, if you feel you're going on that Broadway, guess what? You have an opportunity to make a seven, eight point turn as long as you're going the opposite direction and then you get off on exit 316. Do you hear me? I don't care how much you're carrying with you. Many people say, I've done too much. I've, there's no way God can help me. I've done gone too far. I'm telling you, you could be carrying a semi-load of sin behind you. You've done the most disgusting, most abominable things. All you need to do is go ahead and take a hard right. Turn that beast around and you find exit 316. What is exit 316? Well, John said it best. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Let that sink into your heart for one moment. For God so loved. Hallelujah. Word of God says love covers multitudes. A semi-load of sins. A train load. Some of you are a conductor on a train of sin. You don't only have one car. You've got about 50 behind you. And a caboose. But I'm telling you, if you allow Jesus to be the engineer of that train, you'll see. I don't know. I've never seen a train turn around and make a 180 and go back the other way. But I'm telling you, it might seem impossible the way you're thinking, but with God, all things are possible. And I'm telling you, that turnaround brings a people to that exit, and that exit 
will save their lives. I want you to put your hand on your heart and say, God does love me. How do I know it? Thus saith the Lord. And you need to grab a hold of that right now. God does love me. Even all that I've done and all that I'm going through, yes, he does. He does. Well, praise the Lord. His love for you looks past your sins and sees his son hanging on the cross. His body bleeding out, ripped up, cut up, but yet he is still hung up. Can you imagine that? His love that he has for you looks past your sin and sees his only begotten son hanging on that old rugged tree. As bloody and, and beat up and cut up as he was, his blood came down that old rugged beam holding him up. And as soon as it hit the ground, all of hell screamed out, Love has conquered. Love has conquered. Love has conquered. And I thank God for that. Because what happened was, when the blood of the only begotten Son came down that beam and hit this world, I'm telling you, all of hell heard that one drop. And they understood every chain was instantly broken. And those who would believe and trust in the everlasting Father who Love has conquered. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Love has conquered. Love has conquered. Love has conquered. Love has conquered. Oh, hell screamed out. I love that right there. I love that. First John 4 16, the Bible says, and we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect. I want to speak to somebody right here. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. Why, Pastor Coy? But perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him. Why do you love him, Pastor? Because he first loved us. I pray you grab a hold of that right there. I love him because he first loved us. Oh, this holy book is a love letter to humanity. It's an invitation to holiness because without holiness, I'm telling you, church, no man shall see the Lord. Now you pray for me right here because in Hebrews 12, 14 says, follow peace with all men. Follow peace with all men. Follow peace with all men. Every one of you that is arguing over this mask going into Walmart and you're making a big stink about it, I'm telling you right now what you are doing is you're causing something to happen. It is happening within those that are around you. And with that being said, you need to go ahead and follow peace with all men. It's not about your social liberty because I'm telling you right now, the majority of you put on a shirt in the morning and wear that, don't you? No problem. But let's go ahead and cover up that face to possibly protect you from the virus that's coming in and trying to destroy humanity. I'm listening and listening to what people are saying what they're doing. They're not going to take my liberty. They're not going to, I understand what you're saying. I'm telling you when I believe, I believe red and that red is connected to the flag of the United States of America. I'm not going to come up here and preach politics to you, but I'm telling you this, those that are, don't say, hey, I'm not going to put this on, but I'm telling you you're causing strife and you bring in your very testimony up to light because those that are saying that ain't going to wear a mask are also cracking over in the fifth of Jack Daniels and saying hi nobody's going to take my freedom from you you're bound up don't get quiet on me now I'm telling you right now there's rules that's been given out there's rules that life has given, and I'm telling you this right now, that the majority of us, right, we come in and we say, hey, you know, I can't come to church. Why can't I come to church? Because I'm afraid and I'm worried that there might be a disease rolling around. Listen to me. You need to be in church because there's a disease rolling around out there called sin. If you're not in the place of God where he's given you, you're going to find out something. That devil's going to eat you alive. You know why there's empty seats in there? Because fear has grabbed a hold of the heart, and the heart is definitely Desperately wicked. Who shall know it? I'm not going to get too loud. I'm not going to scream to you. I'm not going to dictate 
Hear you, but I'm going to show you the very love of God that's coming in because that very fear has tormented him. And the love is given out. Don't tell me you can't come to church because you're afraid of something coming in and grabbing a hold of you. When you slap a mask on, you walk right through Walmart. Don't be quiet on it now. Don't be telling me you can't come to church because there might be someone there, but you right there go right through every store and everything. Don't tell me that right now. Don't you tell me that right now. I'm telling you right now what happened is that enemy is coming in. And he's dealt with the very heart of the individual. Do you hear me? Don't you dare tell me that you want to see a revival. And I'm the only one in here praying for a revival during prayer meeting. Don't you tell me that. No. Oh, boy. Don't you be saying you want to see your kids saved. You want to draw closer to God. When me and the crickets are the only one in here praying for prayer meeting. That should not mean you know I love you. But I'm telling you right now. I, ho I hope that just... Right there is like, oh, Pastor, you stepped on my toes. Yeah, I stepped on your toes. Praise be to God because we're living in the last days. And if you think that devil's playing games, you better believe this man of God who has a responsibility for each and every one of your souls is going to tell you the truth. God loves you. He desires you. And every part of it, that world wants to kill you. Get away from it. Get away right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't tell me you love God, but you hate your neighbor. You hear me? Don't you dare say I love God, but I hate that person down there. Let me pull back the reins a little bit. I see it's starting to get tight. Come on now. Gloves wearing. I'm the only one wearing tight here. I should be the only one getting tight. Come on. Give you something to hang me up for him. <laughs> Praise God. And you say amen. And you say amen. Praise be to the Lord. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You say, Pastor, what are you telling us right now? I'm telling you that we're living in these last days. And as we understand that the word of God says in Hebrews 12, 14, you follow peace with all men and holiness without no man shall see the Lord. Look and di diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or, or profane person as Esau, for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Come on, church. Don't let that be me. Don't let me sell my birthright for what somebody else is trying to feed me. Brother Gene, the only thing that will keep our soul alive is the living word of God. And if you're allowing Fox News to dictate your life, you make Fox News your idol. And I'm telling you, you're worshiping the world. Wow. If you're not allowing the very love of God to dictate your heart and your thought process, you're allowing the world to tell you how to live. And that must not be. Say, so Pastor, why are you telling me this? I'll tell you why. Because I love you. I love you desperately. I love you more than you ever know. And I fasted and I prayed and I sought the very word of God. And I'm praying that God will open up this word unto you like never before. Because we are in the last chapters. You say, well, nobody will make me to stop coming to church. I'll never stop coming to church. Never will I stop. I'm telling you, in four months, you see every door shut. Do you hear me? And why are we having revival? The government said, hey, don't come in together. Why are we having revival? I'm telling you why. Because it's very position of the church is not taking this seriously. It's been four months since the very gavel of God's judgment has come across this land. And this church is still not having revival. What are we doing? We're going across the same old thing, the same old way. We haven't changed whatsoever. And you think it's going to let up? It's not going to let up. Amen. I don't, don't go past me. <laughs> But you think it's going to let up? You think it's going to get easier? You think we're going to go right back to the same old way it used to be? You're listening to a lie, do you hear me? It must not go back to the same way it used to be. You got a choice today. What's your choice? Your choice is to live and to live for Christ. The most hated men in the Bible were those that were thrown in the lion's den. 
Those that were thrown in the fiery furnace. Those right there that weren't invited to all the parties. Those that would come up and tell the truth. John the Baptist lost his head. Why did he lost his head? Because he said erroneous. Listen to me. The one you're sleeping with is not your wife. You're committing adultery. That's a sin. I'm not mad. Come on, bear with me. But adultery, if you're not careful, will destroy your life and your relationship with God. And if anything, it'll put a wedge in between you and the Lord to where you'll never be able to get to the next chapter of what he's called you to do. You say, Pastor Yee, without sin, you cast the first stone. Oh, boy. If a stone was to hit me right now, I'm telling you, it'd be a boulder. <laughs> And I'm telling you this in this matter right now. I pray that boulder is Christ. I pray that the rock that hits me is Christ. Sister Diana, why isn't the church in full-fledged revival? Because when the very judgment of God and people were looking for answers, what did we do? We compensated. We worked things out. It says, I know a way to keep going forward. How's that? I'll turn that the camera on back there. We'll keep having church as usual. We'll keep going. No! I'm telling you, the very doors must come off the house and the fire of God move through right now. If you ever want to see life come back again. Yeah. Yeah. Who's going to do it? I'm telling you right now, the devil has come in and has lulled to sleep the very hearts and the minds of those who would come in and say, I serve God. They've come in and said that, hey, oh God, help me. They've come in and said, hey, you just keep going the way you're going. We got you covered. I'm telling you right now, I don't want to keep going the way I'm going. Because if this is the first plague of many, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And we talk about the end of the world and the Antichrist spirit is going on right now. It's setting up the government. You just, and we're not careful because we're so blinded to the fact. Because I think it's the church's responsibility to go ahead and sound an alarm. And let people know, wait a minute. This is the very end day. This is the last chapter of this life. You've got to make sure it's good. Can you say amen? How's it good? You put your hope and your faith in Jesus Christ the righteous and nothing else. Do you hear me? Amen. Nothing else. You can't be as a fornicator, a profane person, as Esau. For one morsel of meat sold his birthright. The things of the book of Jude, which I hope by the grace of God, will draw us closer to the only one who has done all to save our life and given us the greatest gift anyone could ever give. And that was Jesus Christ, his life for our life, his love for our life. Listen to me. The purpose of this book of Jude is this. He wrote it to an urgently warned believers about the seriousness the threat of false teachers and their destructive influences within the churches do you hear me that's why it was written do you hear me church that's why it was written to warn the people that there's out there right now thousands of people who are feeding rat poison to the church and saying just hold on we'll get back to the way it used to be I don't want it to be back to the way it used to be you got homosexuality people being married you got those that are wanting to go ahead and molest children and make it right and legal. You want to go back to the way it used to be? We got a Mr. Jenner right now said he's a woman. Are you kidding me? I don't want it to go back to the way it used to be. Luckily, I moved all the grapefruits and the apples out of here. <laughs> Just in case I had a few thrown my way. Right, Sister Shirley, she'll help me, she'll block me. I'm telling you right now, church, that we're in a day where we've got to understand that there are the false teachers and the preachers that are lulling the church to sleep and saying, just hold on. It's going to go back to the way it was. Don't worry about it. I'm telling you right now, if it does, we're sunk. 
Right? Amen. Because what's going on right now is those false teachers and preachers, they're lulling the church to sleep. And what's going to happen when the trumpet sounds, which we got all excited about, guess what? We're going to be like those five foolish virgins. When he came, we didn't have any oil in our lamp. We were sleeping. We were there, wasn't moving. We weren't doing nothing for the very love and the very faith of God. What were we doing? Ritualism. Amen. Sunday, Wednesday, back through it again. But each and every one of you have got a high calling on your life. What is that? Be light right now. Be soft right now. Give people the answer. What is the answer? The answer is a who? And his name is Jesus Christ the righteous. Don't wait for something to go by and say, hey, I hope it's back the way it is. No! God is calling you out now. Amen. You say you believe the living word of God. Well, it's time. It's time. Glory. And also, the book of Jude was to urgently challenge all true followers of Christ without reservation to rise up and contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. You know, I thank God for the Reformation. In Luther, I believe it took the power away from Catholicism yeah. because there are some dark things going around. And you know why a church ends up imploding and losing out? I'm going to tell you why. The flesh starts running the show. Wow. Wow. Man starts looking at gain more than he does the souls of individuals and before you know it he's compromised and all he wants is to fill the very pews of the church house listen to me Pastor Corey his desire has never been to go ahead and fill everything up here what's my heart's desire I want to see revival we prepared for that but my heart's desire right here is for everybody to humble their hearts and pray and seek the face of God that's been my heart's desire I don't want the all altars barren. Why? Because the altars is what brings about the sacrifice. If we just sit back and let the sacrifice go by, guess what? You're going to find this out. That the blood cannot be applied to the doorpost. And when the death angel, the destroying angel comes through, the blood is not applied. If it's not applied, you'll go. Amen. Right with the world. Right. It's leading you out. You say, Pastor, nah, I don't know if it's really true. I don't know, you know. There ain't nobody going to tell me where to stand, how to live, what to do. Each and every one of you standing six foot away from one another. I had to do this to the church. Each and every one of you in the supermarket to buy, you're standing right where this new world order wants you to stand. Hello? You say, wait a minute. I don't know. What about this whole buying and selling with the chip thing? I'm not sure I'm going to take that. If any of you have been buying anything right now, have you noticed that there's been a little shortage of cash going around? Why well, so? They're trying to move something in on you. What's that? And eh, maybe take this chip. You know, I ain't going to take this chip. You find it for, I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to take it. Nah, I'm going to just pay for my groceries and put it right in here. You already took the chip. It's already in your hand. Don't be quiet on me. You say, well, it's not embedded in my hand. No, it's not. But I'm telling you, if you got your baby screaming, looking for food, you got two choices. You got a choice to go ahead and grab a hold of your fishing pole and get out there and start catching some food for yourself. Or you take that chip they're going to put right there in your hand and you go ahead and plug that into that little machine and they're going to say pay. Those are your two choices. You know, the third alternate is this. I believe that the church won't have to face that. I believe just as that word was being spoken this morning in the song that there's going to be a bride taken out of this world. And you can't argue with me about the pre-trip, post-trip, past-trip. Yeah, we might feel a little bit of birth pains. That's what we're feeling right now. 
But I'm telling you, no one who loves his bride will allow anybody to come in and beat on her. Do you hear me? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is going to get us out of here. We're going to get, we're going to go as soon as the trumpet sounds. And I'm telling you, I, the only thing, only thing that is holding back this man of evil from fully coming in is those bodies that are sitting here right now. It's the church of God, the Holy Ghost, those filled believers. You are the only one standing in the gap for it to come to pass. Do you hear me? God has given you a mission. Do not waste your opportunity in these last times. If anybody is filled with the Holy Ghost, you're the reason why Satan hasn't fully took over. Because the church is still here. And the church is holding back that darkness for fully taking over. And I don't care what you say about the President of the United States, I'm telling you right now that that office must be respected regardless if it's Barack Obama or President Trump. That office must be respected. Oh, you guys don't get quiet on me right now. I'm telling you that office must be respected. I don't care if you like the person or you don't like the person. If anything, as a church, don't you dare get all riled up and with the cares of this world and say, well, we're going to do it. No, no, no. Your responsibility as the church is to find yourself in your prayer closet and seek the face of God and look out for your loved ones, your children. Listen to me. I've got two children right now struggling, trying to get back on the straight and narrow path. And I know each and every one of you have the same thing. Have you fasted this week? Have you sought their face out for the glory of God? Have you given your life over for their life? That's the question this pastor wants to ask you. Are you giving it your all as the Holy Ghost is leading you and guiding you? Or are you just waiting for the next day to come to pass? Oh, you guys need to see him. I know. I didn't download my message from the internet. There's a Mark Joe Holstein on the bottom of it. I'm sorry. I know. I hope this is truly challenging you and making you feel good. And this is the reason why. Because if all you're feeling right now is animosity, then boy, I tell you, I ain't no quibble with that. The flesh is dictating the thought process. But if the Spirit of God who is in you is saying, I know what I've got to do. I've been telling you this for a while. I'm telling you right now, if God has put me here to be the one that calls out and screams from the rooftop and saying, you're the only one standing in the gap right now, I'll do it. And tonight it might just be me and the family over here. That's okay. My sister Judy, I fulfilled the responsibility God has given me. Pray that we can all fulfill the responsibility God has given us. Sister Nancy, we have a responsibility. Yes. That responsibility I is to stand. I think what I want to ask is my children are children. They all went to church. They didn't go out to a Bible study. They were listening. Where's your family? Why aren't they listening to what you're saying? Not just us. Praise God. I'm glad you brought that out. You know what my family's doing right now? I'm going to tell you what my family's doing. They're teaching kids out there. They're letting them know what's going on. And in this day and age, if you sit there and you think about the day when somebody's quick to point fingers and sit there and try to call somebody and say, I'm doing something evil, I want to tell you right now that what you're feeling right now, that aggravation, flesh is rising up. But you have a responsibility. Each and every one of us have a responsibility to choose to seek the face of God with everything that we are. My family right now is they're teaching these kids getting ready. They got a song they're going to sing for us next Sunday. Can you say amen? Praise be to God. You know where else my family is? My family at 5 p.m. is right here praying for our souls, your soul. Let me ask you this question. If that's the case, right now my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. I'm telling you, you want this play, God? Seek the face of God. Stop trying to cover your face. Stop trying to get away from it. Hit it head on with the very power of the living God. If you don't, you'll be swept away and lost forever. 
I love you. You know that. I love you. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To hear the word. That's right. Praise be to God. To hear the word. Well, let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. Let me talk right now. This is the Lord's time. Let me talk right now. Hold up. This is your position and your place right here. You can accept it or reject it. That's what the word is. You have a choice. I have a choice. They have a choice. I don't mean any disrespect. I love you. You know that. I've been there by you right alongside. We're okay to disagree. That's all right. But I'm telling you, the time right now is for the church as a whole to seek the living face of God. That's what it is. As a whole. Do you hear me? That's the responsibility. And I'm telling you, you can keep arguing about it, but it doesn't change the fact that Jesus... Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He's at the right hand of the Father. He saved your life. He's brought us here. He's called us to call Him upon. If anybody's sick among you, call on the elders of the church. Anoint Him with oil. Praise be to God. They shall be healed. We ain't anointed with oil. We're anointed with hand sanitizer. We ain't anointed with oil. The devil calls the pastors in the lay and said, you can't come into these hospitals. Why? Because the devil knows if a Holy Ghost filled man or woman will put their hand on somebody sick, they shall be delivered and their sins shall be forgiven unto them. I'm telling you, the very anointing and the power of God is to come through the church of the living God. That's what it is. And if we miss that, then we miss the very high calling. That's Jude, the very servant of Jesus Christ. And brother of James to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. He says, sanctified is this, to them that are sanctified by God the Father. Sanctified is defined to render or acknowledge, to be variable or hollow, to separate from profane things and dedicate it to God. Consecrate things to God. Dedicate people to God. To purify, to cleanse externally, to purify by expiation, to free from the very guilt of sin, to purify internally. How? By the renewing of the soul. What it means in good old Florida terms is this your soul, your heart and your life is right in the eyes of God. What can wash away my sins it is nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Do you hear me? What can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. It is the blood applied to the life that makes a man right in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. Oh praise be to the Lord. Praise be to God. Oh, that's good old Florida terms right there. I think more Haven and or Ortona understand that, right? <laughs> Nothing but the blood. Psalm 51, verse 7 says, Purge me with hisseth, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot are all my iniquities. Create me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew my spirit within me. Preserved in Jesus Christ. You know what preserved means? To keep alive our existence. Make it last. You know why each and every one of us are alive and breathing right now? I want to tell you why. It's because God has spared your life. And he spared your life and has actually had people, I believe, praying for you to remain and to stay right now in these last days. Because I'm telling you, statistically, Brother Gene, you know as well as I do. That what they're saying and what's going on, boy, if that was the reality of it. I'm telling you that if it wasn't for the grace and mercy of God, each and every one of us would be six foot under. This six foot tall man would be laying, Kevin, in the opposite direction. <laughs> I can tell you right now, there's been times I drove home before I knew the Lord. I was on a two lane road and I saw three lanes. What do you do? You drive in the middle. 
I'm telling you right now, God has spared my life. Too many times, Billy, we should be dead, we should be gone, but he still has purpose for each and every one of us. What is that purpose? It is to stay, to remain, and heed the call of God. You say, no, I don't know. I see all these other people talking about how fat the bank accounts are, how wonderful the houses are, no stress, no worries. Oh, boy, I'm telling you right now, the apostle Paul was beheaded. Do you hear me? The apostle Paul was beheaded. Peter was crucified upside down. The only disciple to live it out is John the Revelator, which is the next chapter that we're going to get into. I'm telling you, if you think that's what it's about, laying back, no problems, no worries, then you're eating a false doctrine what he is talking about. God brings about a prosperous way. I'm talking about your life will prosper, but it ain't so much about the very bank account where you have so much you ain't got to worry about. He said he will supply you every need. Let me ask you this question. Can you open up your refrigerator and honestly say God has been good to me? Amen. Can you open up your cabinet and honestly say God has been good to me? And has he given you what you need? Has he even given you something you want? And has he made a way when there seems to be no way? You know why he does that? He does that to keep you, to prepare us for what's ahead. And I'm telling you, Brother Perry, I wish somebody else was preaching this. I wish I could be back there in this chair and them all and say, come on, preacher, you're getting it. I'm sitting there grabbing my arms and saying, oh, he's talking about me. I wish I could get that. But as I look at the time right now, I'm telling you, I don't have that privilege. So guess what? This is all you get. This is what you're getting fed right now. If you don't like it, push it to the side. But I'm telling you, this is meat. This is vegetables. This is everything right now in 2020 that's going to keep you alive until the coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. He says the Lord kept me as he preserved me. I'm gonna land this plane. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And from the noise and pestilence, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. There is a place of where faith meets wisdom. And Pastor has stood there and shared with you. Now, please understand all those that have stayed home because of the elderly and being sick and not coming against you whatsoever. Please understand that. Lord, I'm telling you, it is right now, even there, there's a position and a place for us to have church and seek the very face of God. But there is a time where faith's got to rise up against that serpent that is telling all these lies and you say, today, I want to glorify Jesus Christ. And I'm going to glorify him with my faith and my attitude. I'm going to believe. Holy Ghost, where would you have me to go? I want you to go to church. And I want you to lift up your hands. And I want you to praise me with everything that you are. And then as you understand the inhabitants that he comes in. You know what we do? We make a nest for that holy dove to come and last in. And then I'm telling you, when Jesus Christ was baptized in the Holy Ghost, you know where the Spirit of God led him? Straight out into the desert. You know what he did in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights? He was tempted on a daily basis by Satan himself come up and said, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. But I believe as he looked at those stones, he said, you know what? What I could do is I can not only make these stones a bread, I can go ahead and put a spread across your face and let you smell something that you never smelled before. But you know what he did? He said, no, not right now. The word of God says this. I got to, you be the son of God. Command these stones to be made bread. Jesus looked at him and said, uh-uh. Uh, the bread alone shall not satisfy you. It is the very living word of God. That's what will sustain you. That's what will cause you to live. We've got bread back there in the corner. Do you hear me? We've been blessed beyond measure. 
It's as hard as croutons right now. But I'm telling you, there's bread back there. But what the church has been lacking was the very fresh bread of the very pulpit to come across this land and call people back to an altar of prayer. I believe Becky, when he looked at those stones, he says, I'm not going to eat right now. But one day I'm going to have a feast with my church. I'm going to have a feast with my people. And we'll have life. Closing this. Here it is. And they were called. They were called. Oh, Lord. Brother David, please come up here. Sister Judy, Farnham, come on up here. I want the Lord to lead you in what to sing. I don't even have a song. I have a few songs coming to mind, but I don't have one particular. I want the Lord to God. I want the Lord to lead you in this. He said, and the call. Can you say amen? amen? He said, and the call. Can you say amen? amen? He said, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, and brother of James, and them that are sanctified by God the Father, preserved it. Preserved in Jesus Christ and the call. But Perry, one of the most difficult phone calls that I ever received was from my mama. It was on October 26, 2007, about 10 p.m. And Brother Bubba, she called me and she said, son, you need to pray. Why? Because they think your daddy's had a heart attack. He's not doing too good. That's a difficult call right there to have a whole bunch. I said, I said, okay, Mom, we'll pray. And the last thing she told me before she hung up, she said she wasn't breathing. I said, I serve a mighty God. I said, God, keep them, protect them. It's probably about 15, 20 minutes later, I received another phone call. And she told me that your daddy went home with the Lord. I said, okay. I'll be up there there in Tennessee. I said, I'll be there to get you shortly. And I received that call. I'm telling you right now, Nancy, it hit my heart. I was like, oh, Lord, have mercy. Okay, now i got to work those things out. I had my brother with me, Cody. He was there staying the night, my younger brother. And I had to wake him up, and I waited to wake him up. I said, how am I going to tell him this? How am I going to let him know Dad's dead? So I woke him up. I said, Cody, I said, you're going to tell you something, man. I said, Dad, you went home. As soon as I told him that, he knew what I meant. We started to cry. We stayed up for a little while longer. We prepared our journey, and we had to do. We had to go get my mama. She was in the mountains of Tennessee. And if you ever met my mama, boy, it's hard to get her to drive from here to LaBelle. Boy, she's a nervous wreck. But Sister Shirley, we had to go get her next chapter. So here we are, we actually took a plane, went up there, and you know how these planes go, they take you all over the world. I needed to go to Tennessee, they took me to New York first. <laughs> That's the way the devil does it too. You're trying to get to one place, what does he do? Hop on, I bring it to another destination. So here we are, praise God, we made it to Tennessee, and then I had a car, I wish I would have rented a car from the beginning, I just drove up there, I've been done there about the time it all ended up. I took a car, and here I am, as I'm sitting there and I'm driving through and it's been, Lord have mercy. You know how long it's been since I drove in the mountains? Never. <laughs> you know how long it's been since I drove in the mountains during the night? Never. So here we go, Brother Perry. I'm going up the side of this mountain. And I'm thinking, wow, eventually I'll get to the top of this. Hopefully. So as we're going over these mountains, I realized something that I wasn't at the top anytime soon. So finally, praise be to God, I made it to the top. We came on down. Like putting your hands in the air on the roller coaster ride. Woo-hoo! Praise the Lord. It was a good time. I made it there to the hospital. And there my mom was. She was in the little, you know, conference room. I walked in there. You know what she was doing? She had a Bible open. Never forget that. She just lost her husband, lost my daddy, and she went to the Word of God for comfort. Some of you need to open up that Bible right now. Because you've been suffering too, long, too, too far, too long. 
And you've been going to other things for comfort. Do you hear me? Some of you have been going to too many things for comfort. You need to open up that word. And I sat there and I said, praise God, we made it, Mama. You know what I did as soon as I got there? And I said, I made it to my destination. Sister Judy, you know what I did? I zoned out. <laughs> I've been up for two days. See, I sat down in that seat, Sister Kim. My head hit the back of the wall. I was out. I slept for about an hour. I made it. And then the journey home. Just sitting there, we're talking, and what was awesome is my dad, he had issues, just like, like we all do. My dad, he loved his beer. He loved his cigarettes. He loved just, you know, getting out and doing what he wanted to do. But I'll tell you, I was concerned because the way he died, and I was concerned whether or not his heart was right with God. And what happened was, is my mom's telling me, he says, Corey, what was weird? He says, that day when he was dealing with some pain in his body, he came up to me. And he says his jaw was hurt. He thought he was having a, you know, his toothache or something. And he came up to my mom and said, will you pray for me? And he went back down. They were fishing at the time. And he come back up and said, I want you to know right now that everything is okay between me and the Lord. Out of the blue, he told my mama that everything's okay. Nothing, nothing has ever came like that out of the mouth. It's always, I will be all right. Me and the big man upstairs, we have her later. Oh, you know, he was raised Catholic, I'm telling you. So he knew that, hey, he could go only so far as long as he could make it back to confession and be okay. But I'm telling you right now, he confessed next to that water and that dog and said, Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. And right then and there, I knew as my concern and my worry and everything as far as him making it to the Lord, Right then and there, I knew it. That his heart was right with God. And one day, Sister Diana, I'm going to see him. I want to meet him in the air. I don't know if you heard that right there, but one day, praise be to God, I'm going to see my daddy again. Hallelujah. You see, he was called. He was called. Every one of us are being called this morning. The phone's ringing in your heart. And I know it's 1245. But I'm begging of you, please. As I open up these altars, Sister Judy's going to sing a song. I don't even know what she's going to sing. This is totally God. Whatever she sings, I'm telling you, it's ordained of God. And I want you to please find a place to pray and seek the face of God for a time. Please don't go out that door without stopping and seeking His face right now, I beg of you. Please don't go out this door and say, God, maybe next time. Maybe next time, Lord. Please don't do that. You know, Pastor loves you. And I preached my heart out to you. I know this was kind of sliced and diced in a sense, but please understand. I don't want none of us to go to hell. Do you hear me? I don't want none of us to miss out on what God has called us to do. I want you, please, to seek the face of God. You know why? This is why. Jude told the church, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. That's verse 2. Do you hear that? Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Do you hear that? Everybody take a deep breath right now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because he didn't say add that unto you right now. He says you multiply that unto you. He says what I'm going to do is give you some peace. I'm going to give you some love and I'm going to give you some mercy right now. And I'm going to multiply it in your spirit. You know what multiplication is? Two times two times two times two. But in this case, it's three times three times three times three times three. Times three. The compounds in your spirit. So before I go any further, Sister Judy, please sing. 
in these altars, they're open. Why don't you all come and grab a hold of this, please? Find a place to pray. Please don't go out that door without seeking the face of God. Please don't go out that door. Oh, I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord. Oh, oh.